Welcome to lecture four, part B on how to reformat. The we finished part A of the lecture by saying that reformatting the financial statements involves classifying every income statement and every balance sheet item as either an operating activity or a financing activity. So we need to have some sort of rule as to how to classify what's an operating versus what's a financing activity. And we have a pretty simple rule. If something has interest associated with it, then we're gonna assume that it is a financing activity. And everything else will then be classified as operating activities. So to provide some simple examples, if you look at the balance sheet and you see the inventory account, you do not have to pay interest on inventory. So therefore, it is not a financing activity. It is an operating activity. And that makes sense. We know that businesses have to, have to buy and sell inventory as part of their day to day operations. If you look at the borrowings account on the liabilities, the bank has given us a loan. We've got borrowings. We know we have to pay interest on that. So if there's interest associated with it, it's a financing activity. So our bank loan or our borrowings will be a financing activity. When we look at our profit and loss statement, we can see something like sales revenue. There's no interest associated with sales revenue. So that's an operating activity. Then we could look at something like interest expense or interest revenue and realize they have interest associated with it. So they are financing revenues and financing expenses. So they get classified as financing activities. A few pieces of information before we get into the process of reformatting. We need all our financial statements to be consistent and to follow the accounting principles, of course. So back in Accounting A, when we learned how to prepare our financial statements, we learned assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. This little subscript here, T minus one, means last year our assets equaled last year's liabilities plus last year's equity. Then this year in time T, this year, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. This is letting us know that throughout time, each year the balance sheet equation will hold, the accounting equation will hold. To get from one year's owner's equity, owner's equity in T, that is this year, is equal to owner's equity T minus one, last year's owner's equity, plus owner's equity gets added to it our profits or our comprehensive income minus any dividends we pay or payments to shareholders in general, plus any changes in outside interests. So this year's owner's equity balance is equal to last year's owner's equity balance, plus our comprehensive income for the year, minus any payments we've made to our shareholders, plus any little changes in outside interest, which may or may not happen for your firm. We need to remember comprehensive income. We talked about this in our first lecture. Comprehensive income is our net profit from our profit and loss statement, plus other comprehensive income items. And that's presented in the statement of comprehensive income. It includes things like foreign currency translation gains and losses. Items that affect our equity, but are not recorded as either revenues or expenses due to the accounting rules. They are things that go into other comprehensive income items. In this formula here, the D minus dividend, it's actually net payments to shareholders. So that includes all money the company is giving to shareholders and taking from shareholders. So giving money to shareholders is paying a dividend. But if the company raises money and sells more shares, that would be a negative D. So D stands for net payments to shareholders. It takes into account the inflow or outflow of money between the company and the shareholders. And finally, the change in outside interest or ownership interest. Some companies will have small changes in their equity, the ownership interest from other companies. So we have to take that into account to make sure our starting and ending owner's equity balances make sense. Okay, the steps to reformatting the financial statements. Here I've listed four steps on how to reformat the financial statements. The first one's pretty easy. We're going to look at our statement of changes in equity. And all we're going to do here is identify some numbers. We're going to identify what is the comprehensive income for the firm. We're going to identify what were the net payments to shareholders that the firm made. Okay, Not just dividends, but net payments. So most of the time we're paying out dividends, but we may also be selling shares and they net off against each other. And any changes in ownership interest. Okay, That allows us to calculate and make sure our balance sheet's balanced. Do we know how to get our current equity based on last year's equity? plus our profits, minus any payments we've made to shareholders, plus any changes in ownership interest. Step two, we're going to reformat our balance sheet. Our balance sheet is going to be reformatted by looking through every line in the balance sheet 
and classify in each account as either operating or financing activities. We'll then be able to have our reformatted balance sheet. Step three, we're then gonna reformat the profit and loss statement. And finally, we're gonna calculate the free cash flows. So instead of reformatting the cash flow statement, we can use some formulas to calculate the firm's free cash flow, and that essentially gives us a reformatted cash flow statement. Okay, a quick example of step one. We're looking at Qantas's 2015 financial statement here. The formula said that our owner's equity this year will equal owner's equity last year, plus any comprehensive income, minus net payments to shareholders, plus any change in ownership interests. This is the equity section of the Qantas balance sheet. We have last year's total equity, 2,866. So that's gonna be this number here, owner's equity from last year. And it's gonna be equal to this year's owner's equity after we add our comprehensive income minus off any payments to debt holder to shareholders and accounting for any changes in the ownership interests. So step one, we have to look at the statement of changes in equity. Up here, we've got our balance of equity on 1st of July, 2014. So that's at the start of the year or last year's owner's equity balance. Total equity here. Our equity increases as we earn comprehensive income. So this section here, other comprehensive income or loss, our comprehensive income is 558. Then we go down to this section, contributions by and distributions to owners. We figure out during the year, there has been payments of 19 in total. Okay, The way we do the notation, it would be at minus 19. There's been a total change in ownership interests of four, and there we get our total change in equity for the year. So, sorry, our, our total ending balance of equity. We've got our beginning balance, it's increased with our comprehensive income. It's decreased due to payments to our owners. There's been a small change in ownership interest, and then we can calculate our total equity at the end of the year. So we can add those numbers into the formula and make sure that our equity balances make sense. The financial statements are correctly articulating. This is gonna be important because we're going to use this number, the net payments to shareholders, D in one of our valuation models. So we need to make sure that we get that correct. And the comprehensive income, our income is going to be used also in our valuation models. Step two, we're going to reformat our balance sheet. So we're going to open up a firm's balance sheet. We're going to look at every account that's listed on their balance sheet. And we're gonna think about if that account is an operating or financing activity. And the rule for that was, if there's interest associated with the account, we can assume that's a financing activity. So the first item on a balance sheet is normally cash. Cash is going to be generally classified as an operating activity. Now, yes, there can be interest earned on our cash balances, but businesses need to have some cash on, our, on hand day to day for their operations. So generally as a rule of thumb, we're going to classify cash as an operating activity. Then we could look at our next, act, our next account, such as accounts receivable or inventory. Neither of those accounts have interest associated with them, so they're going to be operating accounts. As we go through, and especially once we start getting into our liability section, we may see some borrowings or debts. They will have financing charges or interest associated with them, so they'll be classified as financing activities. The balance sheet has the accounting equation, assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. After reformatting, we're going to have a new equation to make sure our balance sheet balances. The new equation is going to be net operating assets. And in future weeks, I'm gonna to refer to this as NOA. So our net operating assets, we then minus off our net financial obligations, NFO, and that equals owner's equity. So now we've split our operating activities and our financing activities apart. We're generally gonna have net operating assets we minus off our net financial obligations, that is our debts, the amount of money we owe the bank and our other debtors, and that will equal our owner's equity. So to reiterate how to reformat the balance sheet, step one, we look at all our assets and liabilities and we think about which accounts have interest associated with them. Those accounts that have interest associated with them, we're gonna classify as financing activities. Step two, everything that's not a financing activity, we're going to classify as operating activities we'll then be able to calculate our net operating activities, NOA. And step three, we confirm that our balance sheet still balances. The owner's equity is equal to our NOA minus 
NFO, net financial obligations. A really simple example here on reformatting the balance sheet. This slide presents a very simple balance sheet. We've got some assets, marketable securities, operating liabilities, bonds payable, and our owner's equity, our book value. So to reformat this balance sheet, we have to go through each account and decide if there's interest associated with it. Operating assets, the name here is giving it away. It's going to be an operating activity. Marketable securities means we've got investments which will have interest associated with them. For example, we may have invested our money in buying some bonds that would be classified as marketable securities. So they will be classified as financing activities. And this would be a financing asset. Operating liabilities are going to be operating liabilities. Bonds payable means we are going to have to pay interest in the future. So it's a liability and it's a financing liability. So we're going to have an operating asset, an operating liability, a financing asset and a financing liability. We're going to reformat the balance sheet to look like this. Up here, we've got our operating assets and our minus our operating liabilities to calculate net operating assets. Down here, we've got the financing section of our balance sheet. We've got the marketable securities, which were a financing asset. Then we've got the bonds payable, which were a financing liability. We can calculate our net financing obligations and net operating assets minus net financial obligations equals the book value of equity. Our balance sheet is still balancing. All we've done here is we've changed how the numbers or how the accounts are classified. We haven't done any calculations or had to, uh, to recalculate anything. All we've done is move the different accounts and put them into different sections. We put all the operating assets and operating liabilities together. Then we put all the financing assets and financing liabilities together. We then classify NOA and NFO and check that the owner's equity calculation still works. Okay, next we're gonna reformat our profit and loss statement. Reformatting the profit and loss statement, very similar process to start with. We look at every account on the profit and loss statement and figure out if it's an operating or financing activity. Anything with interest associated with it is a financing activity. So we'll start at the top and look at things like our sales revenue, that's operating. Cost of goods sold, that's gonna be an operating thing. We keep going down and then normally we'll have our interest revenues and interest expenses down further down at the bottom of the uh, profit and loss statement. They're gonna be classified as our financing activities, okay? When we reformat our profit and loss statement, we're going to calculate net operating profit after tax, which is called NOPAT, net operating profit after tax. We then minus off our net financial expense after tax, NFEAT, net financial expense after tax. NOPAT minus net financial expense after tax equals our net profit plus our other comprehensive income would then also equal our comprehensive income as well. Reformatting the profit and loss statement is a little bit harder than reformatting the balance sheet. That's because we have to do one or two small calculations when we reformat the income statement. The reason we have to do some calculations is because tax, the tax expense we see, is going to be influenced by both our operating and financing decisions. So we need to split up this tax expense number into its operating component and its financing component. Apart from the tax effect, Reformatting the profit and loss statement is very similar to the balance sheet. Step one, you identify which accounts are financing. Do they have interest associated with them? Normally it's going to be your interest revenue and interest expense accounts that are given to you. We then have to calculate the net interest expense, interest revenues minus interest expenses to get our interest expense. Step two is where things change a little bit. We're going to adjust our net interest expense for the tax shelter. A tax shelter is also called a tax shield or a tax benefit. And it says that if our business is borrowing money to finance its operations and it's paying interest, interest is an expense which lowers your profit. So therefore, by borrowing money and having an interest expense, you lower your profit, which also lowers the amount of tax you have to pay. So by paying interest, having an interest expense, you lower your tax. So using debt to finance your operations can create a tax shelter or a tax shield. That is, it lowers your profit by the interest expense that therefore lowers the amount of tax you have to pay. So what we have to do with that is we have to calculate 
the tax shelter. So we're going to have our net financial expense, the interest expense minus our interest revenue will give us a net financial expense. We're then going to calculate the tax shield, that is the interest expense times one minus the tax rate, and that allows us to calculate our net financial expense after tax. Then moving forward, when we deal with our operations, we put all our operating revenues and operating expenses up the top, and we can calculate our net operating profit. We then take our tax expense and we adjust the tax expense via the tax shield amount. We're going to do an example and it'll make a lot more sense once we actually do it with some examples and it's in the spreadsheet as well, see all the calculations. But we're going to say the tax expense that's given to us on our financial statement, the tax shield or tax benefit is going to be used to adjust our overall tax expense that would be reported as part of our net operating profit after tax. We then finish off our net income is equal to NOPAT minus NFEAT. Our operating profit after tax minus our financing expenses. Okay? And if there's comprehensive income, comprehensive income equals NOPAT minus NFEAT plus other comprehensive income. Here's our profit and loss statement, a very simple one again. We've got some sales revenue and operating expenses. These are both operating activities. Then we've got some interest revenue and interest expense. We're going to classify these as financing activities. Okay, then we've got tax expense. Tax expense is the difficult item because part of this number is due to our financing and part of it's due to our operating activities. So we're going to have to split up this number, this 424, into operating and financing components. We've got a bit of other comprehensive income as well. So we've got a net income or a net profit, some other comprehensive income, and then a comprehensive income as well. Here's our reformatted profit and loss statement. Now, when you do your profit and loss reformatting, start with your financing activities. So although it's presented operating then financing, when you're actually preparing this, you're gonna start with your financing activities. So we've taken our interest expense of 548. Interest associated with it, we've called it a financing activity. We've also earned interest revenue of 108, so that's also a financing activity. Here, we've calculated our financing expense. In total, we have spent $440 net on interest. That means we've lowered our profit by $440 because of the interest we've had to pay. The tax shelter, also called a tax shield or tax benefit, is 30%, the Australian company tax rate, times the interest expense, the net interest expense, is equal to 132. So what this is actually telling us is that because we've made a loss from our financing activities, lowers our tax bill by $132. Because we've made a $440 loss on our financing activities, it lowers our tax bill by $132. So our net financial expense after tax is the 440 net financial expense minus the tax shelter to give us a net financing expense after tax. Now we'll go up to the operating section. Our sales and operating expenses, our revenue and expenses are here. The tax expense in our financial statement was 424. However, if we did not have our interest expense lowering our profit, we would have had to pay an extra $132 in tax. That is the tax shield that we calculated here. So the tax expense of 424, which was on our profit and loss statement, then has to have the tax shield added on top of that. So our tax expense from operations would have been 556. Our actual tax expense that we paid to the government was 424 but it would have been 556 if we didn't make a loss on our financing activities. So we can then calculate net operating profit after tax, revenue, minus expenses, minus the tax expense adjusted for the tax shelter, gives us no pat. Then we look at our financing activities. We've got our interest expense and interest revenue. We've also got the tax shelter. So our net financing expense after tax is 308, no pat, minus our net financing expense after tax equals net income. There's also a little bit of comprehensive income that gets added to give us a comprehensive income of 1378. Okay, finally, we don't have to reformat the cash flow statement. Because we've reformatted the balance sheet and income statement, we can calculate the firm's free cash flows. There's two ways that we can calculate the free cash flows uh, and they both have to give us the same answer. So both formulas we have to use and check that they 
give us the same answer to make sure we haven't made any mistakes along the way. So we can calculate free cash flow generated by operations. And to calculate the free cash flow generated by op operations, we use the formula FCF free cash flow is equal to NOPAT. NOPAT is the net operating profit after tax. And we just calculated it on our reformatted income statement. We then minus the change in net operating assets. Net operating assets is on our reformatted balance sheet. And the change means the difference between the current year's net operating assets minus last year's net operating assets, plus any other comprehensive income that the firms earned as well. The second free cash flow formula is how free cash flow was spent on financing. Free cash flow is equal to net financial expense after tax. NFEAT was on our reformatted income statement, and it's the financing costs of the business. How much interest did we pay after tax? We then minus the change in net financial obligations. Net financial obligations is on the reformatted balance sheet. This little triangle delta means change. So here I've written change, but in the future, I'm just gonna use the triangle, the delta symbol to indicate change. It means the difference between the current year's net financial obligations minus last year's net financial obligations. Plus any D, net payments to owners or net payments to shareholders minus any change in ownership interest. If you've done a finance major and you've done valuation, you may have learned how to reformat the cash flow statement. You can reformat the cash flow statement the same way we've just reformatted the other statements. Or if you've already reformatted the balance sheet and income statement, you can use these free cash flow formulas to calculate the free cash flow without having to reformat the cash flow statement. If we take the numbers from our reformatted balance sheet and reformatted income statement that we just previously looked at, we can calculate the free cash flows. So the first thing here, equity this year equals equity last year plus comprehensive income minus payments to shareholders. 4,500 was the owner's equity in the current year. That number's the same on our original balance sheet and our reformatted balance sheet. Equity last year, 3,600 is on both our reformatted balance sheet and the original balance sheet. We don't reformat the equity numbers. The comprehensive income number, we have to get that. It was in our comprehensive income statement. For a real firm, we're gonna be looking at the statement of comprehensive income or the statement of changes in equity. And then D, the net payments to shareholders. For your firm, you will look at the statement of changes in equity and find out the net payments to shareholders. In exam style questions, we might just give you three of these numbers and you can calculate whatever's left over is the payment to shareholders. We can then use the free cash flow formulas here. Free cash flow is equal to NOPAT minus change in NOA plus OCI, other comprehensive income. NOPAT straight from our reformatted income statement. Change in NOA, this year's net operating assets from our reformatted balance sheet minus net operating assets from last year's balance sheet plus the other comprehensive income of 10. That was from our income statement. We get a free cash flow of 386. When we calculate it using the other formula, we need to make sure that the free cash flow is the same number using both methods. So the second methodology is free cash flow looking at our financing activities. Free cash flow is equal to net financial expense after tax. That is, in simple words, the interest cost of the business minus change in NFO, that is how much of our debt we have repaid, net financial obligations from our reformatted balance sheet, this year's net financial obligations minus last year's net financial obligations. How much do we owe in total? Plus D, any payments to shareholders. Remember this number here, we just calculated up above and then minus any ownership interest changes. We get the same free cash flow. We're going to talk about these free cash flow methods more in next week's topic when we do ratio analysis and talk about cash flow analysis. But very simply, our operating profit minus changes in our operating assets gives us our free cash flow. That's based on an operations method. And free cash flow here, how much interest did we pay minus our changes in borrowings and payments to shareholders gives us our free cash flow. Free cash flow can be used for two things. Free cash flow can make payments to shareholders and it can make payments to debt holders. Free cash flow can make payments to shareholders, this D. Free cash flow can be used to make payments to debt holders via interest 
or repaying our debt. Okay, so they're the two purposes of free cash flow payments. So we've just gone through the steps of reformatting the financial statements. This figure here, we've looked at something similar previously. Now we've sort of rearranged it for reformatting. We've got our firm here. Our firm has operating assets. Those operating assets are used to interact with customers and suppliers to generate operating revenues and operating expenses. Then over here, we've got our financial obligations. Our financial obligations interact with our debt holders and our shareholders. And based on these transactions and flows, our operating activities generate free cash flows. No pat minus change in NOA equals free cash flows. And our financing activities, we can calculate our free cash flows net financial expense after tax minus change in net financial obligations plus net payments to shareholders. We can think about accounting as stocks and flows. Stocks are the amount or the inventory or the number of things we have in our balance sheet, the actual balances at the start of the year. So T minus one, our balance sheet last year. Then we have flows during the year. We have revenues and expenses that flow through during the year and cash flows, and it gives us our ending balance sheet numbers as well in the current year. We've reformatted, so we end up with this year's NOA minus NFO equals reformatting can be a little bit frustrating the first time you do it. There's often a lot of mistakes that you make. So here are a few mistakes that often get made the first time you try reformatting. Um, the first obvious mistake is that sometimes you simply just forget a line item from the balance sheet or income statement. Every number that's on the original balance sheet and income statement needs to end up being in your reformatted statement somewhere or it won't balance out. So just go back and check line by line that you've got all the numbers and you haven't made any typos. When reformatting the income statement, we have to do that calculation regarding tax expense. Tax expense has both operating and financing characteristics. So we need to split it up into the operating and financing. We have to calculate the tax shield and allocate that to both the operating and financing activities. Reason three, net payments to shareholders is calculated incorrectly. It's not, even though it's D and we often refer to it as the dividend, it's not just the cash dividend that's paid out to shareholders. We have to net it off if the company has sold shares, that is a cash inflow from shareholders. If we pay a dividend, it's a cash outflow to shareholders. So we have to net off all the payments either paid to or received from. And the fourth reason is sometimes we just confuse the signs in the formulas. We put a positive or a minus. We have to just be very consistent. So if you want to call expenses negative numbers, you can do that, but you have to be very consistent the whole way along. I normally, when I do my spreadsheets, try and keep all the numbers as positives, and I know expenses would then be minused off. But you just have to be consistent in your approach so that you don't get any of the signs, the signs of magnitude wrong when you're reformatting. So we've just looked at reformatting. We know that firms create value when they earn a return higher than their cost of capital. And we looked at how we measure the firm's return, return on equity, is very dependent on both the operational and financing characteristics of the business. And we know that from theory, value is only created in our business's operations. That is the product markets. We don't create value by selling shares or paying dividends. So our financing activities shouldn't influence our value. So what we've learned to do is reformat the financial statements so that we can really get an idea of what the business's operations are and what their financing activities are. This is going to allow us next week to do a more advanced DuPont analysis where we can start to figure out what's driving a firm's return. This will be really helpful in allowing us to compare between different firms, their actual performance and the drivers of performance. Very helpful for consulting purposes and valuation, performance, uh, and valuation perspectives to understand what's driving business performance. Thank you very much. And I'll also provide a demonstration in Excel of how to do reformatting with some real companies examples as well. Thank you.